Hi there. Now I've got two tutorials in this series here where we're going to look at how we add and subtract algebraic fractions. In the first tutorial in this series, I've got simple fractions that we're going to add and subtract. You'll notice what they've got is essentially one term in the denominator made up of several factors. In the next tutorial, I'm going to look at harder ones where we've got several terms in the denominator. But for now, before we go through these particular examples, I want to take you back to working with numerical examples, just so we can see the process. Suppose, for instance, I had a half plus two thirds minus three quarters. In order to do something like this, because they've got different denominators, 2, 3 and 4, what we had to do was to find a number, preferably the lowest common multiple of the numbers in the denominator. So the lowest common multiple of 2, 3 and 4 is 12. They all go into 12. So if we take the first fraction, 1 half, we can turn it into twelfths by multiplying top and bottom by 6. Multiplying top and bottom, remember, by the same value is like multiplying by 1. So it's going to still remain as a half, but it's really going to end up being 6 over 12. 6 twelfths then being that half. And then for the next fraction, plus 2 thirds, to turn that into twelfths, I need to multiply the denominator here, 3, with a 4. But if I multiply the denominator by 4, I must multiply the numerator by 4. And lastly, for minus 3 quarters, what do I need to do to turn this into twelfths? Well, I need to multiply the denominator, 4, with 3. 4 threes being 12. But I must multiply the numerator again by 3. And when we normally do these kind of questions, I wouldn't necessarily set them out like this. What I would do would be to go from the question here straight to a line something like this. I would choose what number do they all go into, which is 12. And I would start with the half and say, what do I multiply 2 by to get 12? Well, it's got to be 6. So I'd do the numerator, 1 multiplied by 6. And then for the second fraction, 2 thirds, what do I multiply 3 by to get 12? It's 4, so I do the same to the top, 2 times 4. And then lastly, for minus 3 quarters, what do I multiply the 4 by to get 12? It's 3, and I times the top by 3, 3 times 3. So this would be the version I would go straight to. But essentially, the mechanics of it the thinking, if you like, is exactly the same as what I've got here. And then just simplifying this, we've got 1 times 6 is 6, 2 4s are 8, 6 and 8 is 14, take away 3 3s, which are 9, gives me 5. 5 over 12, 5 twelfths. So it's this method that we can apply to doing, say, a question like this one. So go straight into this. We would say... For a over b plus c over d minus e over f, what value does b, d and f go into? What's the lowest common multiple of these values? Well, it's going to be b times d times f, b, d, f. So I'd put my denominator like so, and so it would have b, d, f. And like I did here, Remember I said, what do I multiply 2 by to give 12, which was 6, and then I multiplied it with the numerator. I've just got to say, what do I multiply b by to give me bdf? Well, it's just going to be df. So I multiply the numerator here, a, with df. So we put a bracket df. Go on to the next fraction and basically do much the same process. What do I multiply d by to give me bdf? Well, it's going to be bf this time. So I multiply the c with the b and the f. c bracket bf. And lastly, 
it's going to be minus. And what do I multiply f by to give the denominator bdf? Well, it's bd. So I have minus e multiplied by with bd. And it's just a question now of simplifying this. Well, I can multiply out the brackets, and essentially it doesn't really change. It's just going to be adf plus cbf minus ebd, and that's all divided by bdf. And there you have it. Okay? Now for this second example, this is a special type, slightly different from this one here. And I'll explain why by just turning to a numerical example, first of all. In this example, we're going to be working with common factors. Now, if I take the example, say, 3 eighths minus 1 quarter, for the lowest common multiple of 8 and 4, it is actually 8. You'll notice 4 goes into 8. It's a factor of 8. So what we do is we turn them into 8s. The first fraction is still in 8, so that's 3 8 But for the second fraction, minus a quarter, for this one, I've got to multiply top and bottom by a 2. 4 times 2 gives me 8, and I multiply the top by 2. So when it comes to setting this out, what I would do is just have one line, put the 8 there, and I'd say, what do I multiply 8 by to give me 8, which is 1? So I'd just have 3 times 1, or just leave it as 3, 3 eighths then. And for the second fraction, minus a quarter, what do I multiply the 4 by to give 8? Well, it's 2, and it'll be 1 times 2, okay? And so when we work this out, we've got 3 minus 2, which is 1, and we end up with 1 eighth. Now, with this example here, we've got to look then for the lowest common multiple of 4bc and 8c. And that answer is an 8, because the 4 will go into the 8, so we'll put an 8 there. I haven't got a b in this fraction, I've only got it in this fraction, so I need a b. But I've got a c that is contained in both of these. So it's sufficient just to have 8bc. So what do I need to multiply 4bc with to get 8bc? Just 2. So it's going to be 2 times the a, or a times 2. And then for 8c, what do I multiply 8c by to give 8bc? Well, it's got to be b. So I multiply the numerator with b. So I've got d times b. And simplifying this, I get 2a, 2a minus db. I could write it in alphabetical order if you like, and write it just simply as minus bd. It's up to you. And then this is divided by 8bc. OK, well, I've got another example here. And in this example, I picked this one purely because it's got three terms, again, as opposed to this one here with two terms. I've also picked it because we've got this whole number here. It doesn't appear to be over a fraction. Well, you can always think of this as being over 1. So you might like to have a go at this. If so, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll run through the work solution so you can compare your method to mine. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. Well, the first thing that we need to do is find out the lowest common multiple for these fractions. And so we've got to find a value that 5 and 2 go into, the lowest number, and that's got to be 10. And for b squared and b to the power 5, well, b squared is already a factor of b to the 5, so it's going to have to be b to the power 5. 
Then we take the C's, we've got C cubed and the C here. Well, C will be a factor of C cubed, so we take C cubed as the lowest common multiple there. And don't forget we've got a D here. There's no D in this term, but we'll need the D, so we'll put a D there. So, we now go through. Remember, this is 2 over 1. So what do you multiply the 1 by to give me this denominator? What well, is going to be all of this denominator? So we times the top 2 with the denominator here. 2 times the 10 times b to the power 5, c cubed, and then d. Put that bracket in there. Now we come on to the second fraction, it's minus. What do I multiply the 5 b squared c cubed with to give me 10 b to the 5 c cubed d? Well, I need a 2 to bring the 5 up to the 10. So we're going to multiply the a with a 2. So we get 5 times 2 is the 10. b squared has to be multiplied by b cubed to give me b to the 5. So it's now 2b cubed. And c cubed has to be multiplied with, well, just a 1 really because it's already c cubed there. We also need to multiply with the d. So we'll put 2b cubed d there. All right. Now the last term, plus. Now we take the numerator, 3e. And to this, we've got to say, what do we multiply this denominator by to get this denominator? Well, it's got to be a 5. 2 times 5 is 10 b to the power 5 multiplied with 1 just gives me b to the 5, so I don't need to put the 1 in. c has got to be multiplied with c squared to give me c cubed, so I put c squared there. And d would just be multiplied by 1 to give me the d there. So that's it, essentially. So it's just a question of tidying this up. And what we've got then is 2 times 10, which is 20. We've got b to the power 5, c cubed, and d. And then for the second term on the top here, we've got minus 2a, 2a, b cubed, d. And for the last term, 3 times 5 is 15, so we've got plus 15, e, c squared. And then all of this is divided by 10 b to the power 5 c cubed and d. So quite long but I hope it's given you an idea of all the different types anyway that we tend to get where we're adding and subtracting fractions and remember in this video what I've done is I've just shown you ones where we've got essentially one term in the denominator. We've got one term here, remember it's made up of three factors, the 4, the b and the c, and so on. Another point I just want to make though, before we finish, is that I've written equals in these algebraic uh, fractions. I would really discourage you from doing that. When you're working with algebraic fractions, you should really write that it's identical to. So I'm going to change that, okay, so that uh, I feel that it's more correct than just writing equals, okay? So I'll leave it up to you, but I'd certainly encourage you really to go with identical to. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you'll look at the next one in this series where we look at fractions that uh, have more than one term in the denominator.